Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show where I talk about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of The Blacklist Redemption. So in this episode, it dealt with a journalist named Kevin Jensen, who's basically been labeled as a CIA operative. And it's a situation where he's like giving all these cred um, credentials of like, oh yeah, is there this, 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 and this? There's no way I could be a CIA operative. It's a situation where it's like... The particular country he's in is run by a very strict guy who's kind of running to be president of that particular country. And the fact is that he has kind of shown a reputation for taking anyone down that might stand against him, even people, even political rivals. He kind of crushes them all because he doesn't want to have any bit of bad press in Kevin being a journalist. The way he's very outspoken with some of the subjects he's covered in the past, it seems like this would be a subject he would obviously not hold any punches for. So it's like, get him out of the way. So it seems like that's from the beginning, which I have my doubts. The moment, the moment Kevin helped out during that gun battle, the fact is that he ran out and grabbed a gun for Tom. I was like, you're a CIA operative, aren't you? And I mean, obviously the end of the episode confirmed that, but to just say that one moment, I was like, I feel like a normal journalist wouldn't have done that because they wouldn't have, just, I don't know, because I feel like there'd be that innate fear, which obviously he's probably scared, but obviously some kind of training kept him from doing it. But obviously, like I said, but it's something that even the team didn't know. Everyone, even Scotty went into this blind thinking that Kevin was just a regular journalist. And that was kind of another interesting thing about this episode, too, is the fact is that we got to see Scotty vulnerable. Like, obviously, we've seen everything kind of set it up like, oh, Scotty's this uncaring, like, not necessarily a monster, but it almost seems like, I mean, the way Howard talks about her, almost treat, talks her about her like she's a monster. Obviously, we see that that's not the case when she's, like, about her own son, but even then, it's kind of a situation where they're like, maybe that's fake, but then it's like you see her crying when it comes to Kevin, because the fact is, her and Kevin actually have a connected history, like, Kevin and Christopher, Tom, were about the same age, and they were in about the same grade, so they were kind of, obviously, her, their moms have been friends, so they were kind of grew up around each other and stuff, so Kevin's just kind of a reminder of Christopher, especially because once she kind of lost her family, um, Kevin's family kind of took her in, and she became more like an aunt to him and everything, so she kind of watched him grow. So this whole mission was very personal for her, even though, like, the government is like, yo, back down. I, I That kind of should have thrown some red flares up. I was like, because the moment they rescued him before they could get him out of the country, I was like, that guy's going to say something about him being a CIA operative. It's like, oh, no, he didn't. Well, obviously, that same guy, his name was Bob, pops up later on in an episode, at the end of the episode. It's like, okay, so here it is. I mean, it's such a shame because it's like you see Scotty, like like I said, you see a vulnerable side to her being so like happy at first when she knows that they've saved him, but then also crushed at the end when she found out that he wasn't saved. What made it worse is the fact is that she has to lie to his mom about it because obviously the CIA can't acknowledge. Well, because they went through so much, so many levels to not acknowledge him. Now, if they go back on the words, that's going to cause, cause up some problems. It's like, oh, the government, the U.S. government lied. It also brings into question anyone he's ever had contact with because it would jeopardize some of the other hidden CIA agents. So basically, his mom won't even know that he died a hero. I mean, at the very least, she'll know to a certain degree because she'll know, like, she'll think, like, oh, he died trying to tell the truth. But it's like, not, I guess, not giving him full credit for his contributions of what he was going to do. Um, and it's such a shame, but that's just kind of how this whole thing works because that's another side to it as well we saw kind of you kind of see a little more of the political side of things that susan kind of has to handle because it's like obviously halsey and kind of is its own free agency so it doesn't really have to answer to any particular government she does bring up the fact is it's like you won't let me do this but she's like all the stuff i've ever done for the government they're basically the dude bob was like the fact of the matter is there might be a sanction hill to get you or something like that and she's like really basically with all the dirty secrets and all the dirty things i've ever done for the government they can try to come after me but it won't matter i've got so much dirt on them they won't be able to touch me which he was like huh you're sounding more and more like bob which is kind of interesting to think about because it brings up the question, because even Howard's not someone, did I say Bob or did I say Howard? I don't know. If I said Bob before, I meant Howard, that he's, that Bob said that she sounded more like Howard. Like I said, I don't, I don't know. That was just me throwing that correction in, if I did say that wrong at first. Um, which we don't really, like, we've only just been introduced to Howard. Last episode was the first time really meeting him. Obviously, we were setting him up, making it seem like, oh, maybe he's just paranoid. But at the very least, it's like we haven't really seen his personality. Now, hearing that makes you think, oh, he was very much like her in that sense, too. Like, the kind of maybe a little cutthroat, willing to do whatever it takes for the sake of things, you know. So, it's, like, it's a situation where it's like, 
I mean, mainly it's because we got introduced to Susan on the wrong foot. Because it's like, we got associated with Susan because of the whole, you know, Liz situation. So obviously we met her in a bad light. But now, like I said, I think this shit, um, series is going to highlight her more. Obviously, probably not just the good sides, probably the dark sides to it as well. But like, the fact of the matter is you have a very negative light when it comes to her. I mean, especially negative light when it comes to Solomon. But once again, they kind of, they squeak in little moments to make you go, Solomon is very caring, especially during that whole situation when it came to him. Like Tom trying to resuscitate Kevin and just like telling us like no 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 he can he can go on he can you got why are you giving up you can save him and Tom like you had um Solomon being there trying to like console him a little bit it's like dude which is interesting amongst those three of them it seems like if you were to kind of, kind of consider them like break their dynamic down almost like a comedy trio you have like Nez as kind of like the straight man in the, like the comedy situation just kind of like I definitely love the like I I feel like. No, because, like, prior to Solomon really kind of being introduced as one of them, because obviously Susan went out of her way to break him out and get him part of her team. So Naz was kind of part of her team for a little while. So we, I feel like as part of this team dynamic, we've kind of known about Naz a little bit longer. But much like Scotty and even Solomon, which that's the whole concept of this episode. I mean, the series is redemption. So it's like kind of even, not just in a redemption sense of, like, oh, making up for the past. It's more so like also like getting to know them. I know that I, that doesn't make sense with me phrasing it with redemption. But the fact is, it's also about knowing them a little bit, finding out about their past. Obviously, the blacklisters kind of took second priority to obviously like red situation and stuff. Like you get little dabbles here and there with people's past, but I'm sure this is going to be a big focus, especially because it's heavily going to focus on Tom and Susan's past and Howard's past and everything. But I'm sure we get a little bit here about probably Dumont, Nez, and Solomon. I did like uh, kind of going back to what I was talking about, how Susan kind of has to play the more political angle. There was a guy who sells guns to them because they had their original gun stolen, which I'll give props to Dumont. That was a really good idea. I really like that. Basically, the mirror tactic. And if it wasn't for the fact that the dude left the door open because that caused the temperature change, basically destroying the illusion and everything. It's it's so crazy. It's not even like a really heavily it's like oh they come in with some very science fictional approaches. It's like no. I mean obviously like the lens thing from last episode seemed very science fictional, but nevertheless, I mean granted you you never really know because a lot of technology comes from the government first and then then it kind of works its way into the public society. But nevertheless, it's a situation where it's like it's not like a high grade, like like I said, they have very, it seems like that's going to be something going forward. They have a very interesting approach to kind of dealing with situations. I mean, because this was a situation they couldn't go all in on. Obviously, they didn't have uh, government backing. So, I mean, that was their whole way of sneaking the guns in. And it almost worked if it wasn't for the guy leaving the door open. So, that kind of screwed him on that point. But getting back to it, that arms dealer was like, okay, like Scott's like, okay, I'll give you whatever you want. He's like, okay, I want my daughter to have an American uh, music, uh, record deal and go on tour and have her album or whatever sold worldwide. And you have, you have Susan, like Susan on the other line. Like, I don't know if I can do that. And he's like, yes, you can. You know, she's like, I'm not a music. I'm not a, like, um, I'm not a music person. I don't know. Have the, he's like, oh, but you have those connections. And she's like, well, I don't even know if your daughter is any good. How would I really know if she's really worth kind of doing this deal for? And then Tom has to sit there and listen to his daughter like sing, uh, a, kind of doing a Brit, her Britney Spears thing. And it's just like Tom is just kind of like, mm. and he's like, oh, woo, 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 yeah, excellent. She's amazing. Yeah. Oh, oh. Very interesting aspect, but it also brings up an interesting point of the fact this kind of seeing just how far Susan's reach kind of grows, goes and the fact this that she has connections in different avenues, different people of different powers, whether it's politics or something else. Uh, I guess in this particular circumstance, it's a situation where you try to build up as many relationships as you can. Much like any government, you want to stay good with any uh, particular like place or person you want to be in good relationship with them just because it's like oh they'll owe you a favor or you could owe them a favor type of situation so I guess you could also look at it like that though but it was kind of an interesting thing too because Tom ended up finding out oh me and Kevin I mean well Christopher and Tom were fr I mean Kevin were Christopher and Kevin were friends it was like huh she's like because even Susan's like yeah I realize this is very personal if any of you want to back out of this mission 
you can. So that, I'm guessing that's why it hit Tom the hardest. I'm sure, like, it's also because it's like they went through so much trouble to rescue him, especially because at the time they thought he was just a plain journalist. And it's like, you know, Tom respected him because Tom was like, he does good work. But also finding out he's your friend, he's one of the few connections to your past, too. And it's like, now he's going someone you considered a friend. Because something was crossing my mind during the episode. It's like, oh, could it be a situation where when Kevin sees him, he goes, Tom, I'm like, wait a minute, Christopher? And he, Tom has to be like, shh, 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 don't say anything. But obviously, it turns out not to be the case because they were... I forgot how old Christopher was when he... Well, Tom was when he disappeared. But, I mean, him and Kevin knew each other when they were very, very young. So, I'm not sure that would really kind of really stick with you over the course of 30 years that you'd immediately recognize someone you haven't seen for that long. But the fact of the matter is the whole... CIA aspect of it, obviously, we're not getting that much information on it. The fact is they're keeping a very tight lid about the whole circumstance. So I am curious. I mean, the fact is that I don't know if that's going to be something that comes up later on or not. I mean, it's something that not even, you know, Susan is, you know, purview to that information because it is kind of like a government secret and everything. So Tom's being thanked and everything because he's the one that kind of went back for the laptop, which makes sense because obviously, once again, he thought... Kevin was a journalist. He's like, oh, this is all about getting that story out there. Which, you know, sitting here thinking, like, I another thing that kind of caught my eye was the fact is that he was so adamant about, I was like, that wasn't just, like, all for a story. Once again, CIA operator. Like I said, there were hints to it already there, so it didn't come to me, oh, no, he was a CIA. I was like, part of me was like, oh, maybe I was wrong, but then it's just like, there was so much kind of leaning towards him actually being one, so. But it kind of shows you, too, that even... With her connections to the government and stuff, she's still not purview to everything because that Bob dude definitely knew about it. So, would the CIA have actually done anything? I don't think they would have actually done anything because it's like if they rescued him, you know, I mean, obviously Susan and her people were able to do it. I mean, granted, it caused some problems. They had to kind of literally cause a fire fright in front of the embassy and the guys were like, yo, let us in. And the embassy, like the guards outside the embassy were like, nope, you're not getting in. So, I don't know if necessarily the CIA would have been able to necessarily... I mean, obviously, they probably wouldn't have gone as guns blazing. That was really their... Not what they wanted to do. Obviously, Kevin complicated things a lot. I mean, granted, it makes sense to a certain extent because it's like whatever information he got was very needed. I feel like it has to... Do, I mean, because basically, they're talking about keeping good relationships between that country and the U.S. because it's like... The reason why they help this like president out is because they, why they're trying to stay on good terms with him is because they help each other out. That basically when the time comes that he can leave open routes for soldiers and stuff to kind of slip through. So, but it's like seeing the way he handles things, re the way he goes about things. I, it's it's one of those situations where it's like, I guess once you're not, since you're not part of the political circle, you really won't know the give and take with that type of situation. It's like you make a deal with the devil to make... I mean, I guess you could argue it's kind of in the same situation when we're ready. Then you work with a bad guy to get to do do what you need to do. So, but um, Susan also brought up a line at the end of the episode how sad she was. She was like, "Yeah, I guess what hurts most is the fact is that a mom not even being able to know who her son really is." And you have Tom sitting there, kind of turning his head the other way, just like her son's right next to her, and she doesn't realize it. And part of me is wondering, like, obviously she keeps looking at these old videos. One day, maybe she's going to catch something. Obviously, Tom's never really had... There's never been any distinct thing to distinguish between Tom and Christopher. Like, the fact is, like, oh, I, he has a birthmark or something like that. I just halfway expect her to keep seeing something in that video and then one day look at him and be like, you know, you remind me so much of Christopher. So, but overall, a very good episode. I'm very interested to see this series continue like to get more of a feel for this team i'm all like i already like what they were doing last episode and it seems like we're continuing that with like the way like i said they handle things very differently than the blacklist task force because obviously they're kind of an own their own independent thing so they can handle things very differently they don't have to not necessarily to a certain degree they have to but they don't have to necessarily run things to up the chain like the task force would have to i mean granted even with, with reddington that's not always the case anyway uh, but like like I said, like it, it just kind of puts in perspective just how powerful this like company is that Susan's at the head of. I mean, it makes it makes you realize just how much scarier Susan is now that she controls a majority of it. Because remember, part of it was the last episode we ended up finding out with Christopher being officially dead. All of the remaining power that was supposed to go to him, you know, now that Howard's quote unquote dead, is now transferred to her. So it just makes you wonder just how much scarier she's got. But once again. This episode humanized her a little bit more, so now 
now it is in a situation of like as we go forward, it's going to be a situation of the angel versus the devil and Susan. Which one's going to win? Also, I just got a quick note. It's it's just weird. It messes with me now just because I know that's not her natural accent. I've like before anything else when it came to Famke Jensen, like I always heard like her you do an American accent. I think the first movie I ever saw her in was like the X Men movies. Uh but you know, subsequently, like if you've ever seen the show. Hemlock Grove, which I'm probably going to end up bringing up in something else. This is like the first thing I'm recording, so I'm probably going to end up bringing up in something else I'm going to be recording. And I just kind of thought that was kind of interesting. But um, she has an accent in that, at least in the first season. It kind of disappears in the later seasons. But nevertheless, it's a situation she started off with an accent. And it's like, I'm, it still bothers me. It's kind of, it catches me off guard a little bit because I'm like, I know that's not true. It's because I can't help but notice it when I find out someone has an American, like it's putting on an American accent. I can't help but stare at their lips and like, ah. Oh, Look at you! You're being you're su being such an amazing fraud. I mean, I'm, I'm, I say fraud. Fraud is such a strong word, but I love it. Like I love that so much. I literally have to bring that every time I find out someone is it because it's like they do such a good job with it. So, and just a little quick note I want to add in an episode. But really, that's all I want to talk about. So the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.